Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. We offer a number of ways to help you with your journey here at Anxiety Coaches Podcast, and I hope you will take advantage of everything that we offer. Be sure to subscribe to this twice a week podcast. I'd also suggest visiting our website where you can sign up for our newsletter, you can listen to the 10-minute body scan meditation, and check out the group and one-on-one coaching options, along with the resources and more information on anxiety. Go to anxietycoachespodcast.com and check all that out today. In today's episode, I want to talk about being able to lift your mood with your environment. And by environment today, I want to be talking about your actual home environment or, you know, the house that you live in or your room that you live in, um, whether it's a college dorm or, you know, a big sprawling mansion, your home, your home environment, the place you hang your hat. So I was, you got thinking about how we feel and how easily our mood can be changed by external events. And so the home is very important here. Have you ever noticed does like clutter or dirt around your home nag at you mentally? Doesn't it feel like you can actually, you're kind of carrying it around with you? And it just adds more to our to-do list in our mind. Oh my gosh, I got to do that. I have to fold that basket of laundry or whatever it is that's in our visual field, we can start to feel it adding to our to-do list and our stress level will probably be rising also. Because you, you've probably noticed the, the flip side of this. You've noticed how much more relaxed you feel when you come home to a tidy house or a tidy room, or when you even sitting down to work at your desk. When the desk is tidy, you actually, and it doesn't mean immaculate or uh, totally um, minimalistic. It just means it's orderly. You notice that you can actually think more clearly. You can get more done. Uh, there's less distraction that is nagging at us uh, because those things go into little files in our head like, oh, I got to do that. I got to take care of that. And if all the papers in our life are all over our desk, We can't concentrate so much on the task at hand. So often there, you know, a lot of people believe that having a neat home isn't a very important aspect in their life. And the reality is that your mood can be lifted by having a certain amount of order in your house and uh, cleanliness matters too, but, and this is going to be very individual, right? We're all different. We all have our own things that are very, very important to us. But everybody, believe me, can feel better and have a a lifting in your mood by, by having a certain amount of order. So if you'd like to see your mood improve, I thought we might talk about some of the simple ways to do it um, without causing more stress in our lives. So to lift your spirits and feel like your home is your sanctuary, imagine that, going home or going to your room or even to your desk, and it's feeling like, ah, this is my sanctuary. This doesn't have to be my sanctuary, doesn't have to be my meditation corner. It can be my home. My entire home can be my sanctuary. So the first thing I thought we could do is look at how the mood and the tone of our home influences on how we feel. You have to really start to pay attention to this. Like the type of furnishing you have is really way less important uh, than the level of cleanliness and order and organization. 
So make small changes in your home that make you happy. You don't have to go out and buy new furniture. You don't have to give everything away, but just find a few places that you can make small changes that could make you happy. It actually could be as small as no longer leaving the laundry basket in the family room to be folded, like either leave it in the laundry room or fold it and put it all away. Little tiny changes like that can really begin to clear up some mind space for us. So like if you've had a hard day at work and you return to your house and it's disorganized and needs uh, definitely needs a cleaning, your spirits will feel this. You're, you will feel this energetically. It will really lag on your mind. But if you return to a home that's somewhat organized, relatively clean, your spirits will be lifted simply by coming home to your own place, your sanctuary. Another thing you can do is think about how your home can be a reflection of your mood. So not only does the state of your home influence your mood, but the inverse is also true. Studies indicate that how You handle your possessions in your home, things that are important to you, is a reflection of what you believe about yourself and how you feel. So this can be very telling. If you're in a calm and relaxed mood by uh, uh, when you're out in nature, then you can begin to think how that can be reflected in your own house how you can arrange your home to bring some of that calm, relaxed nature into your home. Have things organized. Have things um, clean. It's not always every place you look in your house that's saying, oh, this needs to be put away. This needs to be mopped. This dish needs to be washed. You know, nature is just what it is, right? It's all perfectly imperfect. And if we want to look at our own homes like this, we will be seeing we don't need to be perfect, but we need to arrange it as so that we can feel as we do when we are out in nature, that relaxed and calm feeling. If you're emotionally overwrought or uh, if your anxiety is, is high or you have depression, your home may be in need of some organization. Maybe it needs to be decluttered. Maybe it needs a deep clean. Get some help. Don't be afraid to ask for help in getting some of these things done. You are worth it. If you're feeling down and you find yourself with a home that's not neat and clean, remember, when the home's challenges are addressed, your emotional state may improve. So this is actually a good place to put some energy. You know, sometimes with anxiety, we have too much energy just looking for a place to be um, expelled. And of course, exercise is awesome and uh, all the other things that we do, but we may want to use some of that energy in puttering about the house, placing things, moving things a little bit here and there, picking things up, putting things in baskets, whatever it is, you are going to notice a change in your emotional state. So how do we do this? How do we have a neater home? Well, we can sort and store our possessions in an organized manner. This doesn't have to be perfection. What we're really looking for is an organized home, meaning that you can find things when you need them. And when you see things in your home, they don't drag you down. It doesn't need to be a grand scheme and you have to take two weeks and shut the house down and redo everything. No, just do small things like putting your keys in your purse near the door, um, putting your cooking utensils by the stove, washing the dishes at the end of the day, putting the toys in the playroom. It's very small, but it can make a difference. And I'm hoping you're really going to give some of these ideas a try because I want you to avoid getting overwhelmed by the idea of cleaning and organizing. Don't do that. I want you to look at it as um, almost a prescription of, of this is healing. 
This is healing work when we organize and clean our homes. So just uh, give yourself a plan. You can only do one room at a time. Or if your energy is low, you can only do one drawer at a time. But give yourself the joy of being able to complete some small tasks in your house with cleaning and organizing. You can also just concentrate on one area or one room. And you know what? I think the best place to start, this is for me anyway, is my desk. If I can make my desk feel like when I am at my desk, I'm in a part of my sanctuary, I'm ready to roll. It makes me give more energy. It makes me be able to think more clearly. And it gives me a plan for the rest of the house and what can be done there. So maybe you want to start somewhere like that, a desk or a countertop in the kitchen. You'll be surprised how much better you feel at your home if you begin to tidy up in really small ways. And last but not least, I really want you to take this to heart to ask for help. You know, you can be in a big home or a small home, and it may be too much with your level of anxiety or depression right now to organize everything yourself. And it can feel like a mountain that you're going to be tackling. Don't do that then. This is a perfect place for you to give yourself some self-compassion and ask for help. You also may be just too busy You may have a big family that you're cooking for, you're working full time. I know the drill. I want you to just look at it in a way that you can find a solution. And usually if you are that busy or that overwhelmed, asking for help is the key. This could mean spouses or kids. It's a great place to start. We all share this living space together and one person is not totally in charge of everything. So ask for help. Make it fun. See if you can't make it a game somehow. With The smaller the kids are, the easier it will be to engage them. Give them specific tasks and watch your house change before your very eyes. Everyone involved will feel better. And if you have the financial resources, I'm telling you, What a way to treat yourself. This is self-care. Treating yourself to professional cleaning maybe once or twice a year. It could be a lovely gift to yourself. And the results can last for months. And it can be much easier for you to keep up with everything once you have had the help getting it all in order. Having your own home is wonderful, but it's a lot of work. And so... The bigger your home, the more responsibility you have, and the more work involved. But I'm telling you, even if you are in a dorm room or you are living in your bedroom at your parents' house, you can make changes that are going to make you feel better. This is about suiting our own personal preferences, and it's crucial to making us feel like our home is our sanctuary. Do everything you can to keep your uh, own area organized, neat, and clean. You'll feel glad you did each time you walk in the door. It is well worth the initial effort. Again, it's one of those things where we put a lot of time and effort in at the beginning, but then it becomes very easy to keep up, and it brings us so much joy. I really hope you'll give this a try. It can work wonders. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. 
So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. The objective of cleaning is not just to clean, but to feel happiness living within that environment. And that's from Marie Kondo. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.